Hello. I have been talking to people who are trying to break into security and people who are in security. A really big thing is, is that they just can't seem to get their first job despite having experience, degrees, certifications, and applying to hundreds and hundreds of jobs. And so in this video, I'm going to go over the top reasons why you can't land a job in cybersecurity and how to fix it. The first reason why you can't find a job within cybersecurity is that you're trying to find a job in cyber security. Cybersecurity is such a broad field. It's like saying you want to get into the medical field. Do you want to become a doctor? You need to take certain actions to become a doctor. If you want to become an x-ray technician, there is a path to that. Trying to get into the medical field would be almost futile because you have no idea what you are wanting to do. Become clear about exactly the type of job that you are wanting to get. And on top of the subject of choosing a targeted job that you want to get within cybersecurity, I would make sure to choose that carefully and one that isn't too competitive. So within the last year, the word cybersecurity has really blown up in popularity. Everyone wants to get into cybersecurity and everyone thinks the only job that you can start with is a security operation center tier one. The thing is that everybody knows about that job and everybody is going after that one specific job. Within the last two years, pay for that job has rapidly decreased and the number of applicants have shot through the roof. From experience, I can tell you that there are no recruiters reaching out to me to become a security operation center analyst not one of them, or incident responder, or any of that. Most of them reach out to me for number one, cloud security, number two, application security. And to further my point, I actually went on LinkedIn and then found these two job descriptions. One is for a junior SOC analyst, and it was posted a week ago, pays about 45,000 to $65,000 and is in Virginia and has over 400 applicants literally within a week. Whereas if we go over to this application security specialist job in Chicago, you're gonna notice that it's entry level. It was also posted a week ago, but there is only 29 applicants. It also pays way, way more than a security operation center analyst. Why is that? Why is this higher paying lower competition job, more that has less applicants. Why is that? That's because everyone is doing the same thing. Everyone is going through hack the box and then getting a SOC analyst or hack the box labs and then applying to hundreds of SOC analyst jobs where no one ever really talks about application security. So no one really is going after that much. So make sure to do your research and choose one that is related to your current industry, making it easier for you to switch, but also that doesn't have an insane amount of competition. The second reason why you can't get a cybersecurity job is bad position. Positioning. Now, what do I mean by bad positioning? How you're presenting yourself to employers and what message you're sending them. For instance, this could be a resume, your LinkedIn, your online brand. It could be a number of things, but you want to make sure you're positioning yourself as someone who is an expert in the field and can get things done. To go into the resume example, I'll actually use two of my resumes to show you the difference of the resume that got me fifty to sixty thousand dollar jobs versus the resume that gets me jobs for a hundred and thirty thousand remote plus jobs in the midwest which is like two hundred thousand dollars in seattle so let's look at my six-figure cybersecurity resume that nets me tons of interviews and gets recruiters reaching out to me insanely now as you can notice everything is targeted for a security engineer position. That is key and number one rule. Your resume must be targeted towards a position that you want to get, not this general cybersecurity resume, trying to keyword stuff things to get past the applicant tracking system, none of that. The second thing you're going to notice is I only speak of what I contributed and what I accomplished. I didn't really put down my day-to-day -day tasks and routine tasks because anyone can really honestly do that. And then people really 
hiring managers want people who can get things done. So showing how you, what you achieved at that in a quantifiable way would be very beneficial. The third thing is I didn't really include anything that wasn't relevant for that job. So I have help desk experience, but I didn't say I answered phones and did tickets underneath an IT support specialist. I only chose the security related tasks that I did in those jobs, even way back at the beginning. So how you frame things that you've done is also really important. Now, the next one, look at my early career, five years, mid-tier type of resume, and you're going to notice an entirely different story. Number one, all of the bullet points are just things that I did day to day and not really what I accomplished or how I progressed. Number two, I tried to keyword stuff it and it looks really bad. So the formatting is really bad. Number three thing that is wrong with this is that I didn't show how I was progressing. In fact, if you look at my first job, an IT support specialist, it's actually higher than a junior network administrator position. And let me tell you, I wasn't even a junior network administrator. I was just a network administrator. So why did I put junior? Honestly, I really just wasn't confident in my skills enough and I didn't know what imposter syndrome was, but I had it. And so I downsold my skills and the resume. I remember a recruiter going and looking at this specific resume and saying, it looks like you're still an entry level person. I had been in the field for five years. I also had degrees and I had certifications. I had technical experience, yet I was still getting these callbacks for an IT support specialist. Yeah, so don't be me and make sure you showcase your skills in a really good way because it does matter and it's your first impression, which is very lasting and it does determine where you end up. The next reason why you can't land a job in cybersecurity, despite you going through all of these courses and certifications and degrees, is that you're listening to the wrong person for advice. You always have to take in consideration the background of the person talking to you. Every country is different. I specifically only know about the United States. I may not be the best person to listen to if you are in a different country that is not the United States. Also, I started out in IT support. That is, I know how to change your career and upskill into cybersecurity. There's no cookie cutter advice that applies to everyone. And so depending on your background is really going to depend on. For instance, if you are an IT support person and you're trying to upskill into cybersecurity, I honestly wouldn't recommend becoming a security operations center analyst. That is going from one black hole to another black hole, right? So I would suggest maybe going for an engineer position or learning a high demand skill like application security or cloud security or even GRC, something of that sort, as there's a lot of competition to become a SOC analyst. The next reason why you probably can't get a job in cybersecurity is that you lack experience, therefore you can't pass those scenario-based interview questions. So if you've been just studying for certifications and degrees, I feel for you. I was there for years. The thing is, when you go to actually apply that knowledge to solving problems, it, it's not really the best way. And that is honestly, this kind of changed my mind when I read the book, The Unschooled Mind, where it went into a case where they did a research on honor students in a physics college, but they noticed when those physics, those honors physics college students went out into the real world, they actually couldn't solve any problems that were a slight difference than what they saw in their lab. And that is what I see happening to a lot of people going through these certifications, these degrees, these hack the box labs. You, maybe you can remotely do it, but can you actually solve problems in the real world? And can you talk about the problems that you had and how you overcame them? That's really what is going to set you apart in the interview, not about how you did these tutorials and then basically just copied and pasted someone else's project into your portfolio. So knowing the problem that you solve for a specific job and starting there and then figuring out different projects and portfolios is the best way to gain hands-on experience. This also leads to a concept called just-in-time learning. 
This means you're only, you only learn things as you go. So a lot of people have been taught that they need all of this information to do things. And that leads honestly to imposter syndrome and feeling like you never know enough. But in reality, you only need to know enough knowledge to solve the problem. And if at the time you don't have enough knowledge, you can figure out that knowledge as you go along. This is way better than learning a bunch of facts and then memorizing answers for a test and then taking that test. Chat GPT has literally replaced a degree and all of that. The next reason you might not be getting a cybersecurity position is that you're not qualified for the positions you're applying to. This may seem like common sense, but you 100% need to be qualified for that job, at least a little bit. Doing hack the box labs or taking a certification isn't going to qualify you for a job. So what is going to qualify you for these cybersecurity jobs? You may be wondering. That is creating an online portfolio and an online brand showcasing how you have the specific skills for your targeted cybersecurity job. Not the specific skills just to work in cybersecurity as that is extremely broad. I repeat, skills you need for that specific job. It will that way when you go, for instance, if you want to become an IT auditor, that is actually really broad. Maybe you want to become an IT auditor for the Department of Defense. In that case, you should learn what STIGs are and then you should actually go and maybe create a lab and then a vulnerable lab for a SQL server and then go through DISA STIGs and see if they are compliant or not and then do some type of portfolio project showing how you are qualified for that and went through it and make sure to include all of the struggles that you had while going through that project. On top of that, back to the resume and LinkedIn, make sure your resume reflects how you're qualified for that specific job. So I know I was probably qualified for much higher paying jobs than what I was selling myself on, but because I wasn't positioning myself in front of employers as someone who is like that, I got passed up on a lot of opportunities. This being said, there's no like official accepted universal bar that everyone can climb through to get into cybersecurity. So how do you define qualified? That is actually really hard and you're gonna have to probably jump through tons of different various hoops depending on the industry. So if you want to work for the Department of Defense, they absolutely require you to have a CompTIA Security Plus. If you want to work, say, for a financial industry, they usually require you to have a degree or a certification of some sort. Now, if you're going to go and you are going to go work at a startup, they're usually pretty lenient on having a degree or certifications. So you could actually just bypass all of that. So it just depends on the industry and also the size of the company. Remember, large bureaucratic organizations always love to see degrees and certifications. It is a way to weed out of the hundreds and hundreds of applicants that they get every day. The next reason is that you live in a weak tech sector or you're in an over competitive area. Now, when I lived in Seattle, when I lived in the Seattle area, there's an insane amount of tech jobs. But along with that is there's an insane amount of tech talent and really smart people. Not to say that other areas aren't really smart, right? But there's just a high concentration of them because those are tech hubs, right? But what I found is that there are places in the country that have a high amount of cybersecurity jobs with a little bit less competition, making it way easier to not only find a job, but advance in your career and also get paid as much or if not more than you would in those really expensive coast system, coast, those coast areas. I moved to Ohio and I actually got paid more here than I did in Seattle. And then on top of that, there are more opportunities here than in Seattle, Washington. Also, I noticed like Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and Philadelphia also have an insane amount of like demand for cybersecurity positions. Now you might be iffy about moving to the Midwest and I don't blame you, but honestly, I prefer it. It's a way less pretentious and the cost of living is way less. And so before moving, honestly, all I did when trying to gauge 
how many cybersecurity jobs are at a place is I just change the location on my LinkedIn profile and I see if recruiters are starting to reach out to me more. So before moving, you can do a test to see how much that demand is. This will of course vary on your LinkedIn profile. So make sure that is positioning yourself in the correct way. Also, if you are interested, I do have a mentorship program that's core mission is to help you break through tutorial hell, endless certifications and labs and one off projects by helping you develop real world projects that can be applicable to your targeted job. It will build your confidence to become a cybersecurity professional and beat imposter syndrome. So if you're interested, I do have that link below so you can apply and then hopefully I will see you there. If not, I do have tons of other videos like this, how to break into cybersecurity video right here. And yeah, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.